Johnny. I have Pat on the phone. Okay, what's up, man? What's up, bro? Can you just take down the link to the So, filming people exposes their angels and or their demons. Yeah, I definitely feel like he's just a hardcore manipulator. He is obsessed with social media and social status. Pat definitely has a problem with social media. His drug of choice changes, and right now it's TikTok. Left Graceland, I've just heard a lot of people in the recovery community are like, yeah, if, if you want to work in recovery, like you probably shouldn't even mention that you went there. Long program, so... Um, if you can get a year sober and, and do what we ask, we're asking you to do, you can graduate. And Johnny's been here for almost two years now. This place has changed my life. Thanks, everybody. Um, okay, cool. What else? Uh, we have a lot of haters. We have like people online literally oh, dedicated to that have a lot of nice things to say about it. Patrick Ridge is the owner of Ridge Production, described on their LinkedIn as a one-stop shop to shoot videos, music videos, actions, sport events, promo reels, and weddings. Patrick Ridge is also the owner of Graceland Ranch Sober Living, an establishment that people can use as a resource to gain sobriety and also start an online career. In many of his videos, you can see Patrick expressing the passion for his sober living as it came from his own experience gaining sobriety and his sense of identity being surrounded by the deeds he does in owning a sober living. Veronica Ridge is Patrick's wife. She is a hairdresser, um, also somebody that helps with Graceland Ranch. In our modern era of commodifying the majority of our lifestyles or even our life story so we can have livelihood, uh, I think it's important when someone says they're going to be representing or showing up for a minority of people, such as addicts, people of color, LGBTQ, etic, that their intention should be thought about or analyzed. Um, I know that Graceland Ranch has a history of being a little bit um, defensive about people talking about their community or talking about their intention but overall if it's a positive one then you know there shouldn't be much of an issue to me i have noticed that within their videos or maybe it's my bias obviously if you're sitting here listening and watching me that they kind of have an issue with maintaining the integrity of their message. Um, and then also the interest every month if you're being like a bank. Yeah, and now you over my head. My stepmom and my dad are involved because they have the money to buy the house that we need. Sober Living's like saved my life and they've seen it work and they actually own one currently in Malibu. Graceland's rules and regulations are surrounded by structure and communication as described by one of their graduates and employees, Johnny. It looks like the sober living is broken into phases before graduation. I believe it's a 12-month program. Uh, this is how I understand it. The first phase, it looks like there are no phones for the first 60 days. You don't work um, and you essentially kind of shadow or look around at the people that have been tenants of the sober living. This is where it transitions into the little brother and big brother program, which again is just like shadowing someone at work. Um, it should be around the two month mark when that happens. And that's when you are able to get your phone back. You can get employment, you can sign in and out. Um, and there's just a more integration towards society as described by Johnny, one of the employees. Within this phase, you are doing different uh, step programs that they have as far as like writing they said there's a business forum they do aa i'm not quite sure what that entails specifically but that's how it was described um every thursday they have house meetings and kind of have an open forum on how everyone is doing this is where people can do their positive and pull up every thursday we get together as a house and we address all the house concerns whether people are lying manipulating you know, half-assing their chores, not going to meetings. Any kind of odd behaviors that other residents in the house see, they're gonna address in an open forum together as a family. Every night at dinner, we do a positive and a pull-up. What that means is each resident finds one thing that their peer is doing that's positive, and one thing that their peer is doing that could be better. And we don't carry our resentments forward into the next day. I guess to support my bias is that somebody in the actual sober living house said that this type of arrangement wasn't exactly the best for people that are gaining their sobriety. I mean, there's 
a laundry list of reasons why even for a sober person that this would probably create a hostile environment. So thinking about putting someone who's getting mental um, help for their addiction, it, it, it ensues still a type of attitude that I don't know how these people in the house kumbaya, but I mean, we can be convinced of that via video. Is that some people say um, allegedly that in the beginning of your stay there, you can detox within the household. And again, that is alleged. Um, as Patrick has confirmed in other videos that they have a separate place where they allow people to detox before entering. Now, because again, I don't know much about sober living households or even the process of the best way to go for a sober living. What I got from the comments is that you know, it, it and from a video that I've seen from someone who stayed there is that it doesn't make sense for someone to detox in a situation like that because they go through psychosis, they go through a lot of different things that are just better to maybe do in a facility and have different type of medical things available to them. Um, but it was it was proven to us via video, even though according to this person that I'm referencing, that they have seen people detox within the UN facility. The thing is they let people detox in the house. They did this video. Uh, I had done a live video when I left and I had mentioned it, not consciously thinking I was mentioning it. And then people that are against Graceland kind of edited that and took it and said, oh, he admitted he detoxed in the house. And then, you know, I, I didn't even think about it that much. But yes, they after that, they went and did a video where it's like Pat and Danielle driving down the street and they're like, we're going to the detox to meet future clients or something but they never show them going anywhere in the video it's just them driving around <laughs> and so I think they like because Danielle had texted me after that and she's like why are you posting that blah 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 and I'm like I didn't even think about it they just you know and so yeah right after that then they posted that video said they were going to the detox um I detoxed in the house off of heroin. There was a guy named Graham that detoxed. The Huge component to Graceland Ranch's online presence is the shock value that it provides to its viewers. I feel like what brought me to the account was Veronica and Patrick's interesting relationship dynamics, which it took me a while to actually watch their podcasts for the sake of research in this video, but to see them go through learning how to still be a couple after 18 years and also the shock, again, shock value of the traumatic events that happen to the tenants within the home because they're gaining their sobriety. And traumatic is just the word that I use to describe. Some of this stuff doesn't look like it should be posted. Like some of these things look like they're personal moments when people are going through rough experiences. And again, Patrick has made it clear and abundant that Whatever is posted online is not posted without a consent of the other party, but that he is always going to film himself in what he's doing, which kind of people around him become the casualty of that effect. A couple of things I've noticed regarding Veronica and Patrick's dynamic is that they've brought up their polyamory, they've brought up Veronica's OnlyFans and promoted it on the YouTube account, sort of, kind of, and since she's been pregnant, less of. They have openly discussed their marital issues within podcasts that, to me, I feel like maybe they should just have a separate page and people wouldn't feel as inclined to comment about them in the way that they do because it's like sobriety and relationship things and I get that they intersect and they're trying to make a moment with the intersection and it's again my bias to say that it could be overstimulating for a couple to put their personal information online for people to have an opinion as well as their business information because Graceland Ranch is very much Patrick Ridge's business and Veronica is supporting their dream and it's just interesting because you do see that Patrick mentions several times that he's more passionate or he has more followers and it doesn't make sense to him because Veronica's a girl and doesn't seem like she's trying as much or he's the one who is the master of creating virality within their empire, sober empire, I don't know, I'm just making up things at this point because of how they communicate with each other on video and again bias towards someone watching their videos but they are constantly in defense of how Graceland runs how why they make the choices that they do at Graceland and it frustrates them which again 
provides another shock value for this type of show that they're giving us, but doesn't really make sense for the overall integrity of the message of like, does this guy genuinely, like, I mean, genuinely feel joy from helping people and being in their life years after they've gained their sobriety? Or is it kind of like a ego comb boost thing when you do what he's doing? I I don't know. I don't know. And I can't judge one way or the other because I'm not an expert on these types of processes for addicts. To kind of just tie up my point about Veronica and Patrick's relationship is that maybe it would be better to showcase their dynamic on a different type of platform, but as well if you're one of those people that has criticism towards like the commodification of just life in general, you'll probably feel like you're invading their personal business when you watch their shorts. And if you're not, then you will have a great time combing through their content from three years back, even I would say when they first started their YouTube channel, maybe two and a half years ago or three years ago, I do have to put the timing because I feel like I've been following them for around a year and a half, that they actually had more content. Um, Of course, this is pre-pregnancy. This is also, I would like to speculate before a lot of the drama came out about Graceland Ranch and how people actually feel going there. A constant component into uh Graceland Ranch is the defense is Patrick kind of making videos on why what he feels like he's doing is the best for society and why it fulfills his fulfills his life which is fine and dandy and I think even so a bigger point is being missed when we're kind of polarizing someone for doing something quote unquote good is that like their actual whole soul intention may be completely overlooked In my humble opinion, uh, when I say that I can't judge one way or the other if this man is doing what he should for addicts, it comes from a place of saying, seeing people around me like pastors, like, um, uh, you know, teachers, people that are in positions of power use their position against other people or to make themselves feel better and it's just being recorded so that's kind of what we get to have our opinion about when we talk about Graceland Ranch and their YouTube channel. I think that what we're doing at Graceland is like medicine for the world or at least kids that didn't learn how to act which is probably 90% of the people that are in prison they just didn't learn just normal just discipline stuff or have friends that were a positive influence I mean just getting people together and, and just making sure that they're all like positive for each other just that in and of itself is like enough to heal the world having health communities i'm just out here walking at three almost 4 a.m honestly i have a weird i live a weird uh i've always lived weird <clears throat> life <clears throat> or maybe not weird just different you know works for me but um yeah i was just thinking about that and i just thought wow i could just share this with people like people actually hear what i have to say if i just say it in my phone <clears throat> Pretty incredible if you think about it actually fight with that, but I found myself obsessing over how well that post was gonna do but I, I kind of came around and I realized oh It's so it's cool like whatever like it was just a moment and it was just a, 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 a um, Something honest and today. I'm gonna just post more stuff. That's honest It, it wasn't just a moment. It right. was a moment of vulnerability, but I just think that my obsession triggered when I posted it. And it was hard for me to sleep. Yeah. And and I wanted it to do well. I wanted it to go viral and I wanted the whole world to be touched and you know what I mean? Like. Sure, but you're also believing that there's no, there's the only proof of that is if it goes viral. At least the obsession happens after you pose and you're not worried about that while you're filming. I don't have any patience because I'm in fear that I'm gonna lose the moment and I'm not gonna be able to get it again. And I need to recognize that like, it's okay if we don't get one shot. 
again, my bias completely, but I feel as though these clips kind of show you the privileges that Patrick Ridget experienced to kind of make him have this commentary towards and feelings towards his filming process, his right to showcase this lifestyle online for a sense of like movement. And then again, to reinforce the idea that I don't know where his integrity lies be because when a person says that like 90% of people that are in jail, um, you know, didn't have disciplinary type of upbringing or their, I mean, jail is a very complex subject. The prison system is a very complex subject. And of course, a lot of addicts unfortunately get placed there because of just the way our society is set up long story short i don't know if it's exactly positive to, to phrase that you know the people that he's helping never got any type of structural behavior because you know sometimes with addiction it is just addiction and a disease it's very individual um i think it's just kind of like my point of view as a person of color hearing from a white man that like 90% of people that are in prison just, like, never learned how to act. It's, like, uh, there's, like, generations of addiction that raged rampant through black and brown communities because of, like, what happened historically to us and what was put upon us. So if you think about it in the people that he may be helping, like, privileged type of more... And then again, it's like, it's who am I to say that the majority of the people that he's helping are like this? But let's just think about the people that he's trying to source for Graceland, anyone that would look online and see that type of program. And so you have to have to cer a certain access to privilege to even do that to get to Graceland, in my humble opinion. So why would we not assume that those people or those people it's, it's rude to say that Brandon Addict has had more privileges at access than um, somebody that grew up, you know, with not having a phone or seeing their parent um, spend the last of their grocery money or rent money on their addiction. Um, kind of like a just a different scenario. Like, do you think those people weren't ever taught how to be and and experience in this world like no they they went through trauma and you know I feel like maybe because he doesn't want to focus on how people go through things where around addiction that require like you know psychiatrists or therapists people that have just a little bit more education and I'm not saying education is everything but but experience and backing around that um illness to be supporting what is going on at Graceland Ranch like I think the idea of like oh they're just they're just a bunch of people that you know we can just teach how to live and like even in their bio it says program is surrounded or around the 12-step program like or something like in the in the pretense that the the program isn't exactly like 12 steps which I believe is an AA but it's sort of like that so again I don't think all treatments work for all types of people. And for me to say that this treatment didn't work for a person or they relapsed after that, like addiction is an illness and it has and it has to be treated with compassion and understanding. And that's hard, you know, so I'm not saying that what they're doing is not important, but it's it it just becomes muddy when they're doing it the way they are doing it. And I, I've said that, I think, three different times in this video now. I continuously watch Graceland Ranch's footage. I feel like they're filming less and less of what happens in the house um, or they have very curated moments like most social media platforms do um, about w what is going on in their program and facility. And from three years ago, there was just, I felt like I had way more access to, to the day-to-day -day Graceland issues in life and who was actually there versus now it's um you know more more uh more anonymous and I think that's important for sobriety as well and I don't know if somebody told Patrick that or if he just kind of got the overall message from how people were responding to him online um that being another component of it as well the shock factor provided some type of like defense from Patrick because I feel like he has a sense of need of approval by the way that he's speaking um especially in the clip 
where he's opening up to his therapist regarding how he wanted to have a sense of validation from like people online regarding what he was doing like it kind of fuels that hypothesis of the god complex that i feel like may arise when you do this type of work in theory what mr ridge is doing is great but i want to pose the point that these people those insurances are being used to fund their stay at um graceland and then i believe once you pass the threshold where you can actually gain employment you pay graceland some sort of wage as well basically you're there for a few months and you know whoever's paying for you to be there if you're paying for yourself and then once after three months when they allow you to get a job then they they charge you on top of that a percentage of whatever you make they make you turn over your paychecks so they can see what you're making and then they take like a cut it's really bizarre and they tell you not to talk about financials with anybody else in the house uh to be honest i was actually getting a discount almost half price to be there i don't know if that's because of the soft white underbelly thing or if they thought there was like some way that i could promote them in the future which would make sense because pat instantly was talking to me about soft white underbelly but um yeah, once I got, once I was about to get a job, they told me that I was going to be paying the full price and that they were going to take that out of my paychecks. And so I felt trapped at that point. And so I kind of was like, wow, I have no other option but to go along with this, even though it sucks. Or some part of your wages. Um, you do cooking, cleaning, you know, and even in the video, do they show Patrick being like, oh, they're just doing this project for my friend. And it was like putting a bunch of stickers on glasses. Um, so I'm hoping that these people are being paid for any work that Patrick needs to be done regarding his production or sales or because Veronica has a jewelry line. So um, and just overall, like, please don't be putting please don't be putting addicts through like labor just for the sense of oh they need structure with like are you taking advantage of the fact that they're just there um and he's he's posted a video about that as well like oh you know is it not smart to have a group of addicts cleaning my house just because like he had the people from graceland help him prepare his house for his baby shower and i'm just Again, these are all things I bring to the table for other people to have their opinion about. My personal opinion is that, I don't know, maybe regarding sobriety and illness, you might want to have like clear boundaries, which is circling back to my point where there's a lot of criticism, criticism about him and Veronica because Veronica wasn't, isn't sober. Um, and they people feel like they have a need to tell them, oh, is this even a legitimate business because of how you guys run your marriage um you know what what you put online is what's going to be subjected for criticism so maybe the boundaries of all these intersecting topics that Patrick likes to like use as commodification and to get attention need to be like need to be put into different types of outlets or need to be organized better just want to encourage y'all to watch matthew's video somebody that's gone through graceland sober living facility and take my video with a grain of salt just as you take patrick ridge's videos with a grain of salt i don't know anything concrete this is all alleged information from third parties this is all online this is just me speculating from what i saw on their youtube channel so ultimately i would really want a space for addicts to go to like the one that patrick ridge is promoting as far as like it looks beautiful it looks like you can you know find your peace of mind there and um aesthetically um and it's especially if you're art inclined it looks like they really enjoy having different artists on their team and continuing a relationship with them afterwards um as far as you know recruiting people for their production team i think that's all a really great opportunity uh and as well making a brand out of yourself because i've seen several people on youtube who have gained their sobriety and that's kind of what they market themselves as um a sober living person on social media that's posting vlogs you know being inspirational 
<clears throat> and so I just, at the end of the day, want everyone to be happy and safe and don't want people to be exploited. But, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a long time and I'm sorry. I promise I won't be gone this long again. This is 14 Cases of Actor A, Amaya, and I'll see you guys soon, okay?